Soil organic matter is a complex system. There are different types of soil organic matter that are each characterized by different physical and chemical properties, microbial degradability, and turnover times. For example, soils can contain visible pieces of plant material that have barely been degraded, but they can also contain very small organic matter molecules that are bound up on mineral surfaces. A typical handful of soil contains all of the types of soil organic matter mixed together to form a heterogeneous conglomeration. The only way that we can study soil organic matter dynamics is to separate those different types of soil organic matter, a process known as fractionation. When we perform soil fractionations, we aim to isolate soil organic matter fractions, each of which behaves in a uniform way that is unique from the other fractions. Soil organic matter can be fractionated by physical methods on the principle that soil organic matter fractions with different size and or density differ in terms of stabilization mechanisms and turnover times. Light fractions, with densities less than 1.8 grams per centimeter cubed, are predominantly undecomposed residues, whereas heavier fractions, more dense than 1.8 grams per centimeter cubed, are generally characteristic of mineral-associated organic matter, also known as organomineral complexes. Heavier fractions can be further separated by size. Fractions that are larger, greater than 53 micrometers, are characteristic of organic matter that is associated with sand-sized particles, whereas smaller fractions are associated with silt and clay-sized particles. Organic matter can also become encapsulated in soil aggregates and therefore physically protected from microbial degradation. These aggregates are more dense than the light fraction, but range in size from microaggregates, which can be smaller than 53 micrometers, to macroaggregates, which can be many millimeters across. In the fractionation procedure that we will explore today, we will be separating primary organomineral complexes rather than aggregates. In order to do this, we will disrupt soil aggregates prior to fractionation. In cases where researchers want to study soil aggregates, a different procedure, one that doesn't include disruption, would be used. In today's lab, we will demonstrate a common soil fractionation technique used to isolate the light fraction and sand, silt, and clay-sized fractions. Step one will be to separate the light fraction by floating it in a dense liquid known as sodium polytungstate, or SPT. The light fraction will float to the top because it is less dense than the other, mineral-associated fractions. Then we will aspirate it out of the liquid using a vacuum filtration system. We'll start from the very beginning. So day one of soil fractionation, you will need your soil samples, some conical centrifuge tubes, glass beads, sodium polytungstate, often abbreviated to SPT. For this particular procedure, we'll use a density of 1.85. Water is density of 1, so this is almost twice as dense as water. A pair of gloves to protect yourself. SPT is non-toxic, but can, it's a mild irritant, so we'll want to wear a little bit of protection for that. So what I've done is I've recorded the weights of these tins plus the soil. This will be important later when we want to calculate how much we have of each fraction. So what I'm going to do now is add 25 milliliters of sodium polytungstate, or SPT, to each of these vials. Next, I'll add 12 glass beads to each centrifuge tube. And finally, I'll add the soil. The next step is to let these shake for at least six hours on a reciprocal shaker. The shaker's been going for at least six hours, so I'll turn it off. At this point, all of the aggregates have been dispersed. So the next step is to centrifuge them. But to do that, I want to make sure that all of the soil is off the sides of the cap, so I'll rinse with SPT, fill it up to the 40 milliliter line, and then balance them. Now the tubes are the same mass, we can put them in the centrifuge and they will be balanced. 
Put them across from each other. Set it for 60 minutes at 25 degrees C at 2,500 rotations per minute. So the centrifugation is finished. And so there's a clear separation between the heavy fraction and the light fraction. So the next step will be to aspirate off this light fraction. So this is the aspiration setup. We have a sidearm flask and a filter setup with a 20 micrometer filter. This will collect all the light fraction and allow the SPT to pass through, which we'll keep and recycle. This is connected to a vacuum, so I pull the vacuum. There's suction here. What's important here is that I also collect it off of the sides. So then what we will have is the heavy fraction, the light fraction, SPT to be recycled. So here's the light fraction. Step two, isolate the sand size fraction by sieving. While our first step separated fractions based on density, this step uses differences in size to separate fractions. Sand size material is greater than 53 micrometers, so we will use a 53 micrometer sieve to separate the sand size fraction from the silt and the clay sized fractions. The sand size material will remain on top of the sieve, while the silt and clay size material will go through. So here's the samples after repeated rinses to remove all of the SPT. The next step is to separate this heavy fraction into three different components, the sand size, silt size, and clay size. The first step we're going to do is separate out the sand sized and particular organic matter fraction. We can do that by using a 53 micrometer sieve. So this is a sieve that has holes that are 53 microns wide. Add the sample. Look, you can see that there is the silt and clay size fraction still coming through the water. I'm adding clear DI water, and it's coming through muddy. Can you see the drip in there? Perfect. As I continue to clean it, eventually that will become clear. Now that it's running clear, I'm confident that I've separated out the sand size, or greater than 53 micrometers, on top of the sieve. What has passed through is our silt and clay fractions. Now that we are left with silt and clay size material, our final step is to separate the two. This is another separation by size, as silt size material is defined as anything between 2 and 53 micrometers, while clay size material is anything smaller than 2 micrometers. Rather than sieving, we will use centrifugation this time. Since silt is larger, it will be pulled to the bottom during centrifugation, while clay will remain suspended. We can then aspirate the clay just like we aspirated the light fraction. So the final step is to separate out the silt from the clay fractions. What I've done is I've centrifuged these, so anything smaller than 2 microns will have stayed in suspension, and this, everything larger than that, uh, which is the silt fraction, will have settled out at the bottom. So in this case we have the suspended clay and the silt in uh, settle out at the bottom. 
Uh, right now it's difficult to see the actual difference between the two of them, but when I aspirate off some of the more of the clay, I can show you what, how I can tell the difference. This is a very similar setup to the light fraction aspiration, but with a much larger model. Look at it now, especially against the backlight. You can see there is a very thin layer of silt and then suspended clay. You can look and see a lighter brown and a much deeper, darker brown. I very carefully put it into a pan, and I'll later add to a 60 degree oven to dry. Next is to take the silt out of this container and put it in its own pan to dry. There is this clay and the silt fraction. Once we have weighed out all of our dried soils in the pan, then we can move on and calculate how much of each fraction we've isolated, as well as our total recovery. We start with our pan plus the initial soil before we added it to the tubes. Then we weighed the pan after we added the soil to the tubes. And over here, if we subtract the empty pan from the pan plus initial soil, we'll get the total amount of soil that we added. We can do the same thing with each of the fractions. We weighed the light fraction pan when it was empty, and we weighed the light fraction pan with the light fraction in it that's dry. We did the same thing for the sand, silt, and clay. So if we move on, we can calculate how much of each fraction we've isolated, as well as the percent of total soil that each fraction represents. So here, our light fraction is the light fraction pan plus light fraction, minus the pan weight, and that's 0 0.0526 grams. That corresponds to 1.01% of our total soil, which we calculated by dividing the light fraction mass by the total soil mass and multiplying by 100. We can do that for each of our fractions and then add up those percentages to get our total recovery. This represents whether or not we recovered all of our soil in our fractions and can tell us whether we lost some in the process, or in this case, we may have gained some mass. Why might that happen? Well, one common thing that happens during this fractionation procedure is that SPT isn't fully rinsed out of our soil. If you remember, SPT is quite dense, and so even a little bit of SPT can add some percent to your percent recovery because of that added mass. If your percent recovery is too high, it is a good idea to redo the procedure and try to get your percent recovery closer to 100 as we did for this sample. That's all for today's lab. To recap, you should be able to describe the purpose and basic principles behind soil organic matter fractionation, recall the general procedure for separating soil fractions by size and density, and know how to calculate the amount of carbon in each fraction and total carbon recovery.